Johnny Dollar. This is Fred Porter, Johnny. Miniatures. Miniatures? You know those tiny paintings, portraits usually done on porcelain? Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. But I don't think I ever heard of any Reimer collection. A half a dozen of them stolen from the Reimer galleries in Philadelphia. Cost us something over $20,000 insurance. Never found them, huh? Well, here's the thing. I just got a phone call from Wilbert Reimer. He wants to see you just as quickly as possible. About those miniatures? He wouldn't say, Johnny, but I'll bet on it. And he insisted that you and only you be brought in. Huh. Funny, since I had nothing whatsoever to do with the case. Well, why not, with your reputation? But I thought you usually had a staff man Plus in security. Plus the fact that our company investigator at that time was Jerry Pitcher. Jerry Pitcher? Yep. The one who was suspected of complicity in some of the cases he was supposed to be investigating? That's the one. Well, wasn't he suspect in that robbery? Yeah, but neither we nor the police could ever pin anything on him. Hmm. All we could do was fire him and warn the other insurance companies to look out for him. Fred. Yeah? Any idea where Jerry Pitch is operating now? Not the least. After the Reimer episode, he simply disappeared. There was talk of his having skipped the country, but nobody was sure of it. Hmm. I wonder if Reimer's suddenly got a lead on him. There's one way to find out. Okay, Freddie, I'll grab the first train. <laughs> CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, Act One of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar of the Mono Guarantee Insurance Company, Philadelphia office. The following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Reimer Collection matter. Expense account item 1, 825 train fare and incidentals, Hartford to Philadelphia, PA. Item 2, 70 cents for a taxi to the Reimer Galleries over on Walnut Street. Mr. Reimer turned out to be short, slightly gray, and very, very British. Uh, let's go into my office, Mr. Dollar, where we can talk undisturbed. Yeah, sure, Mr. Reimer. Well, the art business must be pretty good with a crowd like this in the store. Pardon me, miss. In here, please. Hey, thanks. Well, the gallery is rather well patronized this morning, isn't it? Will you sit down, please? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I must say, Mr. Dollar, that I many times wish that you had been assigned to the case when these priceless miniatures that I'd brought to me from Europe were stolen a year ago. Oh, uh-huh. how so? Well, they were so vastly uninsured, sir. A man of your capabilities would have been able to find them for them. Yeah, maybe. You, instead of that, that Jerry Pitcher. I understand that, although nobody could prove anything, you suspected him of somehow being involved in that loss. Oh, yes. If only because of his failure to investigate it properly. But now look here, son. This, uh, this check has a direct relationship with the unusual number of people visiting the gallery this morning. Uh-huh. This check was made out by you? Yes. I intend to put it in the mails before the day is over. To the Mono Guarantee Insurance Company. $4,050? The exact amount I received for the loss of one of the miniatures, a genuine Pellegrini. But you collected something like 20000 in all. On the 6th it was stolen, yes. But now, suddenly, and most mysteriously, the Pellegrini has been returned to me. What? And, of course, the people out there in the gallery, most of them connoisseurs, would be interested in seeing it again, wouldn't they? Yeah, I should think so. As a matter of fact, I've already found a buyer for it. Who? Uh, Mr. Charles Cunningham, one of my regular clients. Well, just how did you happen to get this one back? Two days ago, when I opened the place, I, I found it lying inside the door on the floor under the letter slot for the morning mail. Just lying there? But it was wrapped in a bit of coarse wrapping paper, the sort of greengrocer might use, and it was tied up with a piece of dirty string. No note or anything with it? Nothing. They're very mysterious. But why was it returned? Who knows? Would you call it a pretty well-known piece, one that might easily be recognized? Oh, definitely. And, and, of course, there were pictures of it in the papers and of the others at the time that they were stolen. In other words, anybody having it stood a pretty good chance of being caught if he tried to sell it. Well, that does seem to be a logical conclusion, doesn't it? Yet there's always the black market. I mean, abroad in Paris. 
A lot of fine art that was stolen during the war has suddenly shown up over there. Yes, and I understand that otherwise perfectly honest collectors haven't hesitated to purchase it. Uh, things taken from the Louvre, from various museums in Germany, and... Well, I would, Mr. Dollar, if the thief were caught smuggling the miniatures out of this country... Yeah, I know what you mean. But now, why return these to you? Ah, uh, one of them, Mr. Dollar. Okay, one of them, but why? Well, there is, of course, one possibility. Yeah? Like what? Well, if the thief himself were a connoisseur, one who would fully appreciate the value of the miniatures, well, I'm certain that he would never bring himself to simply destroy them. That is, after realizing that he couldn't very well dispose of them without being caught. So rather than destroy them, he decided to give up and return them to you? Well, it is a possibility, isn't it? But he returned only one of them. And, of course, this theory of yours rules out Jerry Pitcher. Well, yes. But it's puzzling, isn't it? Yeah. Wait now, the paper and the string you found wrapped around it. What? Where are they? I'd like to see them. Well? Oh, how utterly stupid of me. What do you mean? I... I'm afraid I threw them out with the trash, Mr. Dollar. It was taken away yesterday. Oh, great. You might have found fingerprints on them, mightn't you? Yeah. And they might have given us a lead on whoever sold those things in the first place. I'm terribly sorry. It was terribly stupid of me. My reason for sending them for you was to hope that by finding who returned this one, you might find the rest of them. Sure. In which case, your insurance company, well, needless to say, I would gladly return all of the money they paid to me. Make them pretty happy, wouldn't it? But no. Yeah, they might even feel like handing me a nice big fat commission. No, I've destroyed one possible clue. Well, there must be others, if I can dig them up. Oh, I hope so, Mr. Dollar. Or, of course, we, uh, we could just sit here and wait for the other five to be returned to you. I presume you're jesting, sir. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid so. Yes. So how will you proceed? Well, I'll tell you something, Mr. Reimer. Yes? Yes, Mr. Dollar? I haven't the least idea. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Rhymer Collection Matter. Expense account item two, 60 cents for a cab to Fred Porter's office at Bono Guarantee Insurance. And it was about the stolen miniatures that Mr. Reimer sent for you. And it was, Freddy. Over $20,000 worth, Johnny. Well, is he some idea now about who might have taken them? Fred, one of them, a Pellegrini, has just been returned to him. What? Yeah. Reimer's sending you a check in the amount your company paid him for that particular one. Well, who returned it to him? I don't know. He doesn't know. It was simply pushed through the letter slot in the door of the gallery. No clues, no nothing. Johnny, whoever returned it must have been the thief. Or someone who knows the thief has contact with him. So if you can find this person, whoever brought it back, we may be able to recover the other many things. Yeah. Did the police really do a job when they were stolen a year ago? Yes. And the only suspect was that so-called investigator we'd mistakenly assigned to Reimer because he seemed to know something about art. He was familiar with Reimer's place. That was Jerry Pitcher. That's right. But they couldn't prove a thing against him. And after all, it was only Reimer's theory that Jerry might have been mixed up in it. Why? I don't know. It may have been because of the sloppy way he handled his end of the investigation. And don't forget, it was about that time we learned that Pitch's reputation wasn't all that it might have been. Have you got any idea where Jerry might be now? As I told you over the phone, Johnny, there was talk that he'd skipped the country. Reason in itself to be suspicious of him, if you ask me. I'll tell you this, Fred. If he did skip, and if he had those miniatures with him, the one place he might have gone to... Listen, mind if I use your phone? It's right beside you. Help yourself. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Hello, operator. I want to put through a call to Paris, France. Paris? Johnny... Just take it easy, Freddy, and stay close to this phone so that you can hear. My call was to a strange little character whose name is de Marsac, but who calls himself a Chagri, the gray cat. His knowledge of the Paris underworld and everything that goes on in it is nothing short of fabulous. Yeah, because he himself is very much a part of it, of what goes on there. Not a single important work of art could ever hit the black market without his knowing about it. How, how we, Monsieur Darlene? This is your oldest, your dearest friend, Le Chagri. Oldest and dearest friend, huh? But of course. Oh, sure. Now, listen to Marsac. I want some information. Maybe you can give it to me. For a small fee, perhaps? Perhaps. 
A thousand? You're out of your mind. Mm-hmm. Oh, five hundred? Uh, maybe a couple of hundred, if it's worth anything. Now, take it easy, Johnny. Let me handle this. Now, listen to my sack here. Well, speak, Mr. Well, I'm looking for a man named Jerry Pitcher. Ever see or hear of him? Jerry Pitcher? Oh, no, 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 Mr. You're sure? Yes, I'm sure. Then what about the Rhymer collection of miniatures? Oh, my. Yeah, there's some tiny paintings on porcelain. Yeah, but of course... They were here on the black market. You get that? I sure did. Go on, Johnny. Monsieur? When, de Marsac? When did you see them? Well, it is important. Are you kidding? Of course it is. Then, then you will pay me uh, 400, perhaps? <sighs> 200. Now, when? Oh, oh, me. Well, three years ago. Three years ago? We, we won the purchase for the gallery there in the United States. Oh, well, that's a lot of help. But who who brought them for the Rhymer Gallery? Who purchased them? Do you know? Well? Uh-huh. So that is the question. That's right. Well, then, then 300, perhaps? Oh, oh, it's worth it, monsieur. Okay, 250. Now, tell me who. Well, it was Monsieur Rhymer himself. What? Rhymer himself bought them there in the black market? Oui, monsieur. Ah, I see. Well, so perhaps it is really worth 400? Monsieur? No, on second thought, de Marsac, I'm afraid it doesn't mean a thing. I'll mail you a check. Well, of course, the last time I saw... The... What? What's that? Well? Okay, 400. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was six months ago, June. In June? Oui, June. I had the shop of my very dear friend. Oh, that scoundrel, that terrible crook, Francois Dubesson. Defense. But not for long. What do you mean? Because he could not sell them. They were what you call uh, too hot. Huh? Because they were known to have been so recently stolen from the gallery there in America. Too hot, huh? So whoever had them brought them back here. You see, monsieur? All right, de Marsac. Uh, who was that fence that Dubosan, uh, who was he trying to sell them for? This man, Pitcher? Oh, no, no, monsieur. I told you I never heard of him. Well, who then? Well, alas, I do not know. And with a clever man like Dubosan, well, well, but perhaps for you, my oldest, my dearest friend, and it might take some time and expense. Then no bother yet. Well, monsieur... Forget it. I'll send you a check. Only you can send it to him, Fred. Save putting it on my expense account. Oh, now, wait a minute, Johnny. If he can find out who was trying to peddle the miniatures over oh, there... Oh, you underestimate Le Chagri. What? If he's seen them, he knows what they're worth. So what? By the time he got that information, you'd have to pay him a thousand, maybe two. Well, even so, Johnny, if it leads us to the thief and the other miniatures that were stolen... It leads us to him or merely tells us who he is. What's the difference? And I thought you were convinced of Jerry Pitcher. Well, who else? Why? I don't know. Ask the police. Ask Reimer. Maybe I will. Or maybe I got a better idea. Item four, a dollar fifty for a taxi out to the Museum of Art, where I finally ran down one of the curators, a man by the name of Kingman. Well, of course I know the Rhymer miniatures, Mr. Dollar. Priceless. And such a shame that they've been lost to the world of art. Stolen. Yeah. Oh. Stolen by a fool. How do you mean, sir? Well, I mean, the thief would never dare to try to sell them, but such well-known pieces, anyone anywhere would recognize them, would see that he was brought to justice. Maybe. How much would you say those six little paintings are worth? About? Two or three years ago, not very much. But now that their history is known, well, this often happens with works of art, Mr. Dollar. How much, Mr. Kingman? Well, somewhere I would say... That is, if they are ever found. Yes. Somewhere in the neighborhood of $200,000. You're serious? Well, among them is a body, for instance, and a genuine Pellegrini, yes. A Pellegrini? Pellegrini the Elder. And one of our wealthy collectors, Mr. Charles Cunningham, would pay Cunningham. almost... Cunningham? Listen, do you know where I can find him? I believe I have his address and phone number in my office. Good. Come on. But to why all this interest, Mr. Dollar? I'll tell you about it on the way to your office, Mr. Kingman. Item five, ten cents for a phone call, only to learn that Mr. Charles Cunningham was out of town for the day. So item six, fourteen dollars even, is for a dinner, a room, and some breakfast at the Bellevue Stratford. Then early the next morning, item seven, another dime for another phone call. Insurance investigator, did you say? That's right, Mr. Cunningham. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Dollar? Just answer one question, please. How much are you paying the Rhymer Galleries for a Pellegrini miniature? 
You mean the one that was stolen a year ago that has been recently recovered? That's the one I mean. What's the price? Oh. <laughs> well, now, I... I'm afraid that's something How much, I... sir? Well, it was a private sale, Mr. Dollar. A confidential transaction. And... Well... Well? I don't know whether you realize it or not, but only recently has the value of those miniatures become... Yeah, I know all about that. How much, Mr. Cunningham? Now, look uh, Would you rather be hauled in as accessory to a fraud? You, you mean the Pellegrini isn't genuine? Oh, it probably is. But you said I might be involved in a fraud. How much? I am giving Reimer 20500 for it. Maybe you'd better call your bank and have them stop the check. Stop Thank you, Mr. Check. Cunningham. It looks as though my hunch was right. What? Goodbye, sir. <laughs> Item eight, a buck for a taxi to Fred Porter's office. Item nine, another buck for a cab for the two of us to the Rhymer Galleries. Will you please tell me what this is all about, Johnny? Have you got on the trail of Jerry Pitcher? No, Freddy, I haven't even bothered trying. Hey, listen, do you handle all of Rhymer's insurance? I think one of his premiums do. Well, as a matter of fact, a rather large one, slightly overdue now. Oh, why didn't you tell me that? What difference does it make? Well, if business were good for a man like that, wouldn't he keep up his insurance payments? I wonder how much else he owes. What are you getting at? Money. Looks like we've arrived, though. You know, you still haven't told me why we've come here to the gallery at the crack of dawn. Hey, yeah, buddy. Now, keep the chance. Yeah, man. See, Mr. Reimer's already opened shop. Johnny? Come on, Fred. Well, Mr. Reimer. Oh, Mr. Dollar, I am indeed glad to see you. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, good morning, Mr. Porter. Mr. Reimer. Uh, look here, Mr. Dollar, here on this table. What? Another of the miniatures, a Lombardi. What? Yes, lying on the floor under the mail slot, just like the other that was returned. I can't believe it. Here, let me see. No, no, don't touch it. And you see, Mr. Dollar, this time I saved the string and wrapper for you. Oh? Why? Fingerprints? Yes, of course. Only I doubt if we'll find any. But you were most explicit. Matter of fact, if you didn't wear gloves in wrapping it up, you were pretty stupid. I beg your pardon. Ask that I be dragged in so that nobody would suspect you, huh? Suspect me? Johnny, what of Jerry Pitcher? Who knows where Jerry is, Jan? Who cares? Mr. Reimer, when was your last trip to Europe? In June, wasn't it? I make many trips to Europe in order in to... In June? Well, yes, yes, it was, but, but now look here. Let's go back to your office. I want to look at your bank statements for the past year. Mr. Dollar. Or would you rather I just call in the cops? I don't know what you're talking about. Real honest business you've been running, huh? Of course. But you didn't hesitate to buy stolen, smuggled artworks on the Paris black market. Now, look here, sir. I suppose I should have started thinking when you told me those miniatures were considerably underinsured. What? Yeah, because you insured them before their true value really became known. But by the time you did know it, you'd already pulled the fake robbery, collected the insurance on them to keep your business going. Well, I'll have a piece. You tried to sell them in Paris then, but they were too hot. That was in June. But you still needed money, didn't you? But have I denied it? So that you had to bring them back. After all, you'd only collected about 20000 on them. And now you could sell them for 200000 at least. Is this true? Ah, pretty nice profit. Even after you got through returning what you'd collected from the insurance company. Mr. Reimer, and how to get them back... Have them mysteriously reappear one at a time and give out that cock and bull story about the thief not daring to sell them without being caught. Well, Mr. Reimer. Well, uh, do you think, uh, if I produce the others, if I, if I write and sign a full confession, the authorities will be more gentle with me? Mm -hmm. Son of a gun, why do they do it? Won't they ever learn? What's the matter with people, anyhow? Some people, it is. Oh, well, expense account total, including the trip back to Hartford, thirty-five fifty. And, Freddy, don't forget, a nice fee on this one, as well as a check to Le Chagri over there in Paris. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood 
and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Harry Bartell, Ben Wright, Forrest Lewis, Junius Matthews, and Marvin Miller. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. Johnny Dollar has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.